So the craziest thing happened at the Winter Mercato. Actually, I think on the last, on the second last day of the Winter Mercato, Nicolo Zaniolo of Roma had rejected Bournemouth. Uh, Roma had already accepted the bid for the player, but Zaniolo only wanted to go to Milan, who Roma had rejected the bid. So when Zaniolo rejected the Bournemouth uh, transfer, he actually left the capital city and went to his hometown of La Spezia. Um, because uh, Roma has already said that um, Zaniolo will not be playing for the team anymore. And then he had a change of heart and called the club and said, Hey, listen, I would like to go to Bournemouth now because he realizes that um, Roma is will not be playing him anymore. But then again, Bournemouth had already uh, purchased a few other players and said, hey, listen, uh, we can't afford you anymore. So that's it. You're not going to be transferred. We're not going to pay for you. So Zaniolo is now uh, stuck. He's probably not going to play for Roma. And I don't know what he's going to do. Let's hope things turn out for the better for Zaniolo. Another crazy thing is that Barcelona had inquired about Sofian Amrabat to Fiorentina. It says uh, they wanted a loan for the Moroccan uh, midfielder. But Fiorentina was like, no way in hell. We are going to loan Sofian Amrabat to you. They've Fiorentina have already rejected Liverpool, um, I think Spurs as well, and even Atletico Madrid um, from purchasing the player outright. But the thing is, uh, Sofian Amrabat was like, um, he refused to go to training and, and posted a cryptic message on, on, on Instagram and say, it, like, I think like, he wants to force a move to the Catalan club. And then he was subsequently dropped from the Coppa Italia squad um, where Fiorentina wa was playing in the quarterfinal against Torino. And so Mercato deadline has come and gone and nothing comes out of the Barcelona transfer. Sofian Amrabat was like, then what was I doing? So he went to the club and apologized to the directors and the, and the, and the owner and then he was named in the Coppa Italia squad, um, which he didn't start, by the way. He was he came on as a substitute in the second half, and which Fiorentina beat Torino two to one. Two players have jumped the sinking ship. That is Juventus. Uh, Western McKenney has gone to Leeds, and Luca Pellegrini has gone to Lazio. Milan are on a roll. A downhill roll. This is only the second time in their history that they have conceded four goals or more in two consecutive matches. Last week they lost 4-0 to Lazio and this week they got trashed soundly by Sassuolo 5-2. What is happening at Milan? Is it the loss of Mike Manyan? And Tataru Sanu is not an able backup. Last season, they've gone from title contenders to title winners. This season, to title defenders. To now, just looking for a Champions League spot. An interesting fact is that uh, Milan hasn't beaten Sassuolo uh, at the San Siro since the 2017-2018 season. They've either lost most of the time and they've only like drawn once to Sassuolo and the San Siro. That is crazy. Sassuolo is Milan's boogie team. Domenico Berardi with a hat trick of assists uh, in this game and he even scored a goal himself. I remember um, in his first year at Sassuolo, he scored four against Milan. So off the pitch problems and on the pitch problems now as well for Juventus. Last week they had a thrilling 3 all draw against Atalanta. But this week against a newly promoted side, the side that has never been in the Serie A before this season, have defeated them home and away. And coupled this result with the fact that uh, Fiorentina halted 
uh, Maurizio Sarri's Lazio's winning run. Really proud of it. And of course, Napoli almost strolling to the title with this 2-1 win against Roma. Napoli had opened the scoring in the first half through an amazing uh, Victor Osimhen goal, but Roma equalized with 15 minutes to go uh, through Stefan El Sharawi. But credits to Napoli with the amazing depth. Uh, substitute Giovanni Simeone scored the winner four minutes from time. And here are the rest of the scores for match week 20. Bologna beat Spezia 2 0 while Lecce lost to Salernitana 1 2. Empoli and Torino fought to a 2 all draw while, while Inter beat Cremonese 2 1. Atalanta beat relegation threatened Sampdoria 2 0 while Udinese could only get a one all draw against lowly Hellas Verona. And of course, Napoli is at the top of the table with 13 points clear of second place Inter. Let's take a look at the table after 20 matches. So Milan has dropped to fifth on goal difference with Lazio and Atalanta also having the same points as them but with superior goal difference. Roma is in sixth position with 37 points while Udinese with 29. Torino, Bologna and Empoli make up the top 10 this time round. With Monza in 11th place with 25 points followed by Fiorentina with 24. Juventus have dropped to 13 with 23 points. Of course, they have been docked 15 points by the FIGC. Saranitana with 21 points, Lecce and Sassuolo 20 points each, Spezia just above the relegation zone with 18 points. Hellas Verona the only team in the relegation zone with double digit points, while Sampdoria and Cremonese make up the bottom two with 9 and 8 points respectively. With Inter beating Atalanta in the Coppa Italia, they will have to wait for the Juventus Lazio match to determine who they are going to face in the semi final. Luka Jovic and Jonathan Ikone held Fiorentina to a 2 1 win against Torino in the Coppa Italia quarter final. Um, as Fiorentina move on to the semi final, they will have to wait for, they will wait for the Roma Cremonese match to see which of these two they will face. Of course, I'm recording this before the Roma Cremonese match, so I won't have the results until then. So, can anybody tell me what is going on at Milan? They've only won one match this year. That is against Salernitana in the first match after the winter break. And since then, they are on a run of six winless matches in all competitions. The problem is they'll be facing Inter in the Derby della Madonnina uh, in the next fixture this coming up. Inter of course beat Milan in the Super Coppa Italiana 3-0 um, a couple of weeks back uh, in Saudi Arabia. So Milan's form could pose a really big problem for the Rossoneri. But of course in Derby days like this form goes out of the window. And remember that, um, and also Milan doesn't have to play uh, in the Coppa Italia because they were knocked out in the previous round. And Inter had just played against Atalanta. So what will happen in the Milan derby? Well then, let's take a look at the other fixtures for match week 21. On Saturday night, the Cremonese will be up against Lecce, two newly promoted teams. Sunday morning, Roma up against Empoli, Sassuolo will welcome Atalanta. And in the evening, Spezia up against uh, runaway winners, uh, Napoli. Torino will come up against Udinese. And on Monday morning, Fiorentina up against Bologna, the Derby della Panino. Uh, of course, these two teams are separated by the Apanino Mountains. Uh, that divide Tuscany and Emilia Romagna and of course the Derby della Madonnina at 3.45 a.m. On Tuesday morning, Hellas Verona welcome Lazio while high-flying Monza welcome Sampdoria and on the last fixture of this round, Salernitana welcome a troubled Juventus. So we've got two derbies uh, in these upcoming fixtures, the Derby uh, della Apennino and the Derby della Madonnina. 
Bologna won the reverse fixture against Fiorentina 2-1 while Milan beat Inter 3-2 in the reverse fixture. So who's going to take uh, this win in the derby? I can't wait to find out. I can't wait to watch them both even though the derby de la Madonina is 3.45 a.m. where we are in Singapore. And so don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, that's all for now. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.